Charts explaining the standard model of quantum mechanics kind of suck. This one is by far the most common and most popular, and it's alright, except for it's missing over half of the particles. It does not show any of the antiparticles, and it also is missing a lot of the key attributes of some of these particles, like, for example, the quarks have three different colors that they can go into. These very faint lines show the interactions of these different particles, mostly how bosons interact with fermions, uh, but they're very faint and it doesn't really give you a better description than that. This one does have better and stronger lines, but it's very confusing and it took me a long time to understand what's actually happening here. This chart is by far the worst. When you look at this one, you would think that photons have some special connection to up quarks, charm quarks, and top quarks, which is simply not the case at all. This next chart was made by Dr. Chris Quigg, and it does have some interesting visualizations and it does show some of the relations in a better way, but it just has a very hard time visualizing and showing any other stats. And if you're super lost at this point, so was I. And about a year ago, I decided I want to make a better chart, and I am not a scientist, and so uh, I'm trained as a designer, and I can do research online and get feedback from the community online, and so why not? Why can't I make a better chart? So, some of the key principles that I wanted to do when I made this chart was I wanted to visualize all of the fundamental particles, all of them. I wanted to list their key attributes, and I wanted to show how they relate to each other and how they build into atoms and other things that you and I can kind of understand slightly better. The standard model is extremely good at showing phenomenon that we see in our universe, but we know that it's also missing some of the phenomenon that we see in this universe. So eventually I create a mystery zone, which we'll get into in a minute. I have never taken a physics class. I did all of this by researching online, by watching PBS Space Time and Arvind Ash on YouTube. Those are my favorite channels. And so a lot of credit is due to those who helped me and those who helped educate uh, many of you and many other people around the world. So along the way, I would post on TikTok and Reddit and I would get really good feedback. I would get feedback of things that were confusing to people or things that I simply got wrong and, and was able to correct those mistakes. My first draft was over 10 feet long and I would print these off and put them up on my wall and talk through them. It was really fun. It went from string theory all the way down to chemistry. And my second draft, I cut out a lot, mostly string theory because people did not like that it's untestable and it's also somewhat going out of style. I also added in some information about symmetries and I cut out all of those combined particles like hadrons and beyond, which I added back in into my third draft and I simplified a lot of different sections. And this is where I added in that mystery zone. Fourth draft, I decided to shrink down to the size of a poster because 10 feet long was too long. At first I had this poster vertical, but my friend Brett suggested that I make it horizontal and that I could get it to flow better. And that led me to my fifth and final draft, which I have available on my website for free. You can go download the PDF. You can also buy a physical copy if that interests you. And I really genuinely appreciate any support. I did this all just for fun. So let's dive in. There are four fundamental forces that we know of today. Three of them, we have a good description of how they interact with the quantum world, the very, very small particles. Those are the strong force, the weak force, and electromagnetic force. They all have different symmetries, which is basically a rule book of how they can interact with the rest of existence. Bosons are how these forces convey their powers to the rest of the world. And fermions are ordinary matter. Those are things that you and I are made out of, which we'll dive into in a minute. Eventually, if you combine fermions together with bosons, they will create hadrons. Those hadrons, if you combine them together, create atoms. So that's at a very, very high level how this chart flows. Each particle in this chart has these fundamental properties listed out. So the name, its symbol, the Feynman diagram, the color charge, spin, chirality, weak isospin, electric charge, mass, how rare this object is, which is subjective, and its mean lifetime. How long does it last before it decays? For example, you and I are made of up quarks and down quarks. If you look at your hand, up and down quarks right here, lots of them. Neutrinos are very interesting particles, which I learned a lot about through this process. They have minuscule mass, very, very small, and three different flavors. They oscillate between these three different flavors and oscillate between their different masses. They do last forever, 
basically, but they're oscillating between these. And as you can see here, they only interact with the rest of existence through the weak force, that green line going in. And so they're very, very hard to detect because the, the weak force, it's weak. A neutron is an up quark mixed with two down quark. They're held together by gluons. There's a constant shifting of the colors of these and the gluons that are interacting with them. This binding force, the strong force, actually causes almost all of the mass that you and I ever, ever, ever have experienced. The Higgs boson and its force is kind of different. The nuclear force is a residual force that holds atoms together. It is very similar but separate from the strong force. In the mystery zone, I only had room to add three. These are probably the biggest, so we do not have a good description of how gravity works at the quantum level, although we can kind of assume it does work at the quantum level. Dark energy is how the expansion of the universe is currently happening. We don't have a good description for how this works. We've detected dark matter mostly by how galaxies spin or the weight of galaxies and it just does not match how we believe everything else should work. We know that there's something else going on in the universe that we don't have described here in this chart. So what do you think? Do you see something that I got wrong? Do you have a way that I can make this easier and more visually appealing? Please let me know in your comments. I really do appreciate the feedback, and as you've seen before, I take that and implement it and make a next version a little bit better.